Hey guys, this is Hiking Nerd. Today, I'm bringing you a review of the second item from the Skirka series, the High Route One FL Tent from Sierra Designs. The High Route is a one-person, non-freestanding, and double-walled tent that sets up with your favorite pair of trekking poles. The area enclosed by the fly measures 9 feet by 4 feet, which is similar in size to many ultralight two-person tents. Fortunately, there is plenty of headroom under the fly with its minimum peak height of 48 inches or 122 centimeters. This height can be increased by lengthening your trekking poles to raise the fly farther off the ground. In this video, my trekking poles are set to 51 inches or 130 centimeters. If you prefer a bit more protection, you can set up the inner nest which has a bathtub floor and no seal mesh. The inner nest measures 7.5 feet by 2.5 feet and is intended to be used by one person only. The high route weighs a total of 42 ounces according to my scale, or a little over 2.5 pounds. The fly itself is 23.5 ounces and the inner nest adds an additional 14 ounces. In my opinion, these weights are pretty reasonable for a sill nylon shelter, but you can definitely find lighter. The package also comes with 8 6 inch aluminum stakes made by DAC, as shown on the left. On the right is a 7.5 inch MSR groundhog stake for comparison. You only need 6 of these stakes to pitch the tent, but you can use the 2 extra stakes to further tie down the fly in stormy and windy conditions or to porch the entrance. I spoke with Sierra Designs to better understand the materials used for the high route. In an effort to reduce weight without compromising durability, the fully seam taped high route features different weight fabrics for the fly and inner nest. The fly is made of a 20D nylon ripstop fabric treated on the outside with silicone to enhance water beading and treated on the inside with a polyurethane coating that gives it a 1500mm hydrostatic head. Sierra Designs chose to use the more expensive ether-based PU coating instead of an ester-based PU coating for improved resistance to hydrolysis. When exposed to water for years and years, the ether-based PU coating will be less susceptible to peeling and flaking. From my research, this seems to be the norm for all the good brands, but it is hard to say for sure. You would have to trace the fabric back to its finisher. I like that Sierra Designs has shared this level of detail with us though. The inner nest is composed of 30D nylon ripstop floor and no CM mesh. The floor is treated on the inside with a PU coating that gives it a 3000 mm hydrostatic head. There is no silicone treatment on the outside because the floor doesn't need water beating properties so much as water ingress protection. For comparison, the Big Agnes ultralight tents have 1200mm water resistance on the fly and floor, though this seems to work for most people. The guy lines consist of Kelty triptees for the ridge line and midwall tie downs, and 2.5mm cordage for the corners. Kelty triptees is made of a Dyneema core that is sheathed in nylon. Because it doesn't stretch, you can get a tighter pitch that is more resistant to the wind. Also included are line lock guy line tensioners which may work pretty well for most users. At the time of this video, the MSRP for the Sierra Designs High Route is $300. This is a very competitive price when you consider what you get as far as design, materials, and support. If you use just the fly as a two-person shelter, there is nothing else on the market that comes close in terms of value and functionality. For solo use, there are other options around the same price point, but I think you get more bang for your buck on the High Route. During my testing of the High Route, these are the things that I particularly liked about it. Number one is modularity. For most of the year, I can use just the fly on its own. However, when I want protection from bugs or if I want a bathtub floor during heavy rain and snow, I can also bring along the inner nest. On dry and calm nights, you can leave the fly in your pack and set up only the inner nest for some enclosure. Number two is interior space. The high route has a lot more interior space than you typically get with trekking pole shelters. This is due to the steeply sloping walls created by the offset trekking poles, as well as the vertical walls on the sides. Also, I appreciate that the tent is 9 feet long, which means there is plenty of space for gear even with two people lying down. If you use this as a solo shelter, you'll be living like royalty. Number 3 is ventilation. There are so many ways to vent this tent that condensation shouldn't be an issue. Even when it's fully zipped up in storm mode, there are two 5 inch awnings for ventilation. I love that I can adjust the ventilation in the middle of the night without having to get out of my sleeping bag. Number four, the rectangular footprint. It's easier for me to find a rectangular space for my shelter 
than it is to find a hexagonal space. Also, hexagonal spaces tend to create triangular vestibules that don't fit gear efficiently. Number five, the symmetrical design. The symmetrical design means that I don't need to worry about the tent's orientation while I'm setting it up. If the wind changes direction or if I want the entrance to be closer to my feet instead of my head, I can get out from the preferred side. If you sleep two people under the fly, you have the flexibility of sleeping head to foot or head to head since the footprint doesn't taper. Note that there is a bit more headroom when you both sleep head to foot. Number six is the easy pitch. For non-freestanding shelter, it doesn't get much easier than pitching the high route. Just stake out the four corners, insert your trekking poles, and then tension the ridge lines. The best thing about it is that in the event of rain or snow, this pitches from the outside in so the interior will be completely dry. All tarps have this functionality, but many freestanding tents require either the body to be pitched first or a ground sheet to be laid out to pitch the fly. Number seven, protection from the elements. The steep angles on the high route help the precipitation roll right off the walls. Of course, the trade-off here is that the vertical walls are more susceptible to strong winds. The trekking poles do help to reinforce the walls so that you get less wall deflection. However, you'll still want to make sure that you get a very tight pitch and position the tent so the vertical walls are not scooping wind. The predetermined catenary curve helps with a tighter pitch, and all usually carry two larger stakes that provide more holding power for the ridge line. Number eight, night glow. I think this is a great solution to get diffused lighting in your tent without installing dedicated LEDs like the Big Agnes Mountain Glow. The night glow weighs 7 tenths of an ounce and uses your headlamp as the light source. This not only eliminates redundancy, but as an added bonus, you'll always know where your headlamp is at night. I also like to use the night glow cord to hang my glasses and articles of clothing. Number 9, just the small details. So there are two interior pockets attached to the inner nest for convenience. There's velcro on the awning stay to keep it from flapping. The buckles help take tension off the zipper. There is a shock cord toggle to keep the entrance open. The three attachment loops keep the trekking pole secured to the wall. And Sierra Designs has reinforced the apexes where the trekking poles prop up the fly. With that said, the high route could be improved in the following ways. Number one is weight. This is not the lightest one-person shelter, whether you look at it as a single wall tarp or a double walled tent. I would be interested in a featherweight version made out of lighter fabrics, and I'm willing to pay the hefty price, but most of Sierra Design's customers probably expect their tent to last a long time. After all, the FL designation in the name, which stands for feather light, means this is already one of the lightest tents that Sierra Designs offers. Number two is material selection. So when it comes to material choice, it's all about trade-offs between cost and performance. Not everyone will be happy with the fabrics that Sierra Designs chose to use on the fly and inner nest. For me, I found that the no mesh is delicate and snags on Velcro. So far, the damage has been cosmetic, but I've used other lightweight no mesh that isn't so easily damaged. Also, I'd love to see the high route made with a sil poly fabric that doesn't stretch compared to sil nylon, but few tent manufacturers seem to be doing that at the moment. Number three, the inner nest setup. Setting up and taking down the inner nest is, for me, the most painful part of the pitching process. The hook and ring attachment method is tricky to do from the inside of the tent. I usually end up having to crawl on my stomach so I can reach the small plastic ring in each corner. When possible, I would suggest attaching the hooks from the outside of the tent. Number four, the line lock adjusters. I understand the need for an easy to adjust guy line system for the mass market. And granted, these line lock adjusters work better than other guy line tensioners I've used. But I like to have a tight pitch, and it's hard to put enough tension on the guy lines with this system. I would recommend getting rid of the plastic hardware and learning to adjust guy lines using a system of knots, as it will allow you to benefit from mechanical advantage. Andrew Skirka has a demonstration video using the high route, which I'll link to in the description below. Number five, the color. Personally, I prefer colors that are a bit more understated, but if you like vibrant colors, this has a nice shade of red. I do want to emphasize that this is a non-freestanding shelter. If you have only pitched freestanding tents, you may need to learn a few things in order to pitch this shelter well. A little practice doesn't hurt either whenever you buy a new tent. 
This here was my very first pitch that I did in a rush, and you can see that it's not taut enough for any serious wind. There may be some scenarios where you'll want a freestanding tent, no matter how adept you are at setting up a non-freestanding shelter. For the record, that stake got launched 50 feet into the canyon. So is this a good tent for you and your dog? Well, you're gonna have to ask your dog. Okay, this has been a long review since there is so much to talk about. However, there's one takeaway that I want you to have. Occam's razor is a problem solving principle that says, whenever you have two competing solutions, the simpler one should be chosen. In my opinion, the Sierra Designs high route tent is currently the simplest and most elegant solution for a lightweight yet comfortable shelter that can be used year round. If you enjoy this video and would like to see other related videos, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And feel free to leave me any questions or comments in the section below. Thanks.